Hi there, my name is Conrad and in this video I'm going to show you several ways that you can use expressions to modify the results of your match move or stabilize. This will give you more control over the movement that you add or remove from elements in your shot. I'm going to build on the same ideas that I explained in my previous video where I demonstrated how you can use expressions to build your own match move or stabilize nodes from scratch. So if you haven't seen that and you're new to expressions, you might want to watch that one first. First I'm going to show you how we can simply change the scale of the tracking data. This will allow us to keep the shape of the movement, but reduce or increase the amount of it. Then I'll take that setup and I'll show you how to animate the scale so that we can ramp in or out of our match move or stabilize over time. So let's get to it. In my previous video, we built our own stabilize node. The result of that was exactly the same as if we'd used the stabilize feature of the tracking node. But imagine that you don't want to completely stabilize the footage, you only want to reduce the movement partially. We had to do this on a sequence of shots of people talking in a car. The camera was mounted to the front of the car and the shots were bouncing around a lot. The client wanted us to remove the bouncing, but when we stabilized it completely, it looked odd. So we used this following technique to add about 20% of the movement back in. This gave us a much smoother shot, but with a subtle natural looking movement. And this isn't something we could do just with the default tracker node. We don't really have to create our stabilized node from scratch for this to work. We could export a transform node from our tracker node with the stabilize or match move transform baked in. By using the baked option, the data is copied into the new node and not linked to the tracker with an expression. This means that we can modify the transform data without messing up our tracking data. It's always good practice to work in a way that doesn't destructively change the original data in case we make mistakes or we want to use this original data for something else in the shot. If we wanted to reduce the amount of the stabilization effect, we could export a baked transform node from the tracker and then adjust the keyframes in the curve editor by selecting them all and scaling them up or down in the Y axis. By scaling them down, we're reducing the amount of the effect. This does what we want, but it's not easy to be particularly accurate with our adjustments, and it's hard to revert back to our original data if we need to. We'd really just have to bake out a new copy of the transform node from the tracker again. And there's also no way of easily animating this adjustment over time. If we use the stabilized setup that we built in the previous video as our starting point and build on that, we can address all of these issues. So let's start with what we had at the end of our previous video. Here we have a tracker node in which we've already tracked the tip of this Lego minifigures staff. And here we have a transform node with a knob that we've added so that we can enter our reference frame and the following expressions in the translate knobs. These expressions take the position of the tracker on the reference frame, that's the first half of the expression, and then subtracts the position of the tracker on the current frame. This gives us the difference between the two positions, which is the amount that we need to move the image on the current frame to line it up with the image on the reference frame. If you don't fully understand what's going on here, then please watch my previous video where I covered this in more detail. The result of these expressions is that we are stabilizing the footage 100%. And if we open up the curve editor, we can see the result of the expression plotted over time. There's two separate curves, one for X and one for Y. But what if we only wanted to reduce the movement by half, rather than remove it completely? Well, we can do that by simply multiplying the result of our current expression by 0.5. We need to wrap the whole expression in brackets first, and then add, multiply 0.5. When we close the expression window, we can see that the animation curves in the curve editor update to show that we've hard the movement. And if we hit play, we can see the result. This is great, but like in our previous video, we can create a user control that will make it easier to change this value without having to open the expression every time. We already have a user tab on this transform node, which has the reference frame knob. Let's right click and choose manage user knobs. This time we want to add a slider. So from the add menu, choose floating point slider. Let's call this slider a mount. This is the name that we'll use in our expression to reference it. And in the label, we can enter stabilize amount. This is the text that will show up next to the slider to help the user understand what it's doing. The min and max values are good as they are. They define the range of the slider. So in this case, it will go from zero to one, which is what we want. 
Now, when we click OK, we see that we have a new slider on the node controls. Let's go back to the expression in the translate knob and hook this slider up. We need to replace the 0.5 in the expression with the name of the slider amount. Now we are multiplying the result of our stabilize expression by the value in our slider. At the moment our slider is set to 0, and if we multiply anything by 0, we get 0. If we set our slider to 1, we'll get the original result of our stabilize expression, because anything multiplied by 1 stays the same. As we move the slider between 0 and 1, we can see how the result on the curve editor scales. So now, if we set our slider to 0.25, we're getting one quarter of the original stabilization effect. We can use the same technique to modify our match move setup. I've got this shot of my untidy coffee table here as an example. I've tracked the leg of the phone tripod, and I'm going to stick this color wheel to the tip of it. As I explained in the previous video, the expression for a match move is the same as the expression for a stabilize, except that we subtract the position of the reference frame from the position of the current frame, which is the opposite way around. But we can still multiply the original expression by the amount variable in the same way to adjust the scale of it. Now, if we set the amount slider to zero, the object that we are match moving doesn't move at all. And if we set it to one, then it matches the track movement exactly. If we set the value to 0.5, we'll be adding half of the movement, which doesn't sound like it would be very useful, but in some cases it can give us a very interesting effect. I have deliberately shot this scene so that the camera is only really tracking sideways. There is almost no rotation or movements forwards and backwards, which means that the only sense of depth in the movement comes from the parallax between the layers of objects in the scene. And the X and Y translations of all the objects at different layers is always in the same direction as the other layers, it's just at different scales. So if we want to make it look like the object that we are adding to the scene is floating somewhere between the tripod that we tracked and the couch behind it, we can use the tracking data from our tripod and just scale it down using our amount slider. So let's set the slider to 0.5 and see how it looks. It seems pretty convincing that it's behind the tripod. If we keep the amount slider between 0 and 1, then we can only add things behind or at the same depth as the tripod that we tracked. But although the slider is only set to that range, we can actually type any numbers into the knob next to it. So if we were to set the value to 2, we're now adding twice as much movement to the object that we're adding to our scene. This can make it look like the element that we're adding is closer to the camera than the object that we tracked. So depending on the camera movement, we can manipulate our 2D tracking data to give us a kind of fake 3D result, which is really cool. And because we have a knob to control the scale of these transforms, we can now easily animate the results too. If we jump to frame 1 of our stabilize setup and set the stabilize amount slider to 1 and right click on the knob and choose set key, we'll create a keyframe. Now if we jump to the last frame and set the slider to zero and hit play, we can see that the stabilization effect slowly reduces as the shot progresses, and the play is back to its original position by the last frame. So as you can see, once you understand what is happening with the maths behind the stabilize and the match move transformations, it's easy to use expressions to start to modify these effects and create results that you can't get by just using the default tracker alone. And techniques like this can be applied to all kinds of effects, not just transformations. You don't need to build very complicated expressions to be able to do a lot with them. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please hit subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. And if you have any questions about this setup or expressions in general, please ask them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.